Unreal Engine 5.5 introduces GPU processing to PCG. Now this is utilizing the new HLSL node, which is effectively a programming language. Now, if you're anything like me, you don't know how to write this code. You might know a little bit here and there, but you don't know how to write it from scratch, but that's okay. We can utilize something like ChatGPT to help us with the main code. And then utilizing some tricks I'm gonna be showing you, we can expose those variables and have full control of them through the blueprint and through the PCG graph to modify on the fly anything we'd like. So like in the scenario where we are creating a spiral and we're able to go ahead and change the distance, change the height, et cetera, you have a lot of dynamic control all on the GPU and be a little more efficient. So let me show you how to set all this up and hopefully explain some of the basic HLSL functionality to you along the way. To get started, of course, you wanna to go to Edit Plugins and make sure you have PCG turned on by turning on Procedural Content Generation Framework and restarting your engine as needed. Once you've gone ahead and restarted, it, go ahead and right click and grab yourself a blueprint class. I'll select ourselves an actor. This is going to be our BP spiral. And also right click and grab ourselves a PCG graph here. And this is going to be our PCG spiral. I'll go ahead and just open both of these up. In our BP spiral, we're going to add a PCG component and we're going to make the instance, the new graph that we just created, the PCG spiral. And that's all we really need here. Now in the PCG graph, what is HLSL and how does it work? Well, if I right click and search for HLSL, you will see we have custom point generator and point processor. Now, all of these are technically experimental right now, so they keep that in mind. If I select the point generator, for example, I can specify how many points in the top right do I want to generate. So in this case, it creates 256 points specifically, and it goes ahead and outputs those points. So if we need to, for example, loop a specific amount of times in 5.5, well, we could just use a point generator and then an attribute partition based on index to specifically loop a specific amount of times on something. So for example, if I wanted to loop on something 20 times specifically, I can specify 20 in here, drag out, use an attribute partition and configure this partition to instead of being last here, it'll be on index. And then I can go ahead and just loop on this. It will loop 10 times. Now I can't preview it. So what we're gonna do is in our viewport here, I'm gonna drag out our BP spiral. So that way in our graph here in the bottom left, we can open this up, select our PCG spiral, press A on attribute partition. And you can see here are our points all 20 of them because we have specified 20 points here. So this is great. This gets us a cool nifty point generator. Unfortunately, it doesn't have an input, but while this is cool, it doesn't get us the really cool stuff, which is actually being able to control everything that goes into it and out of it. For that, we're going to right click, search HLSL and grab ourselves a custom node. This by default has one input and one output. Again, it specifies GPU here, showing it is using the GPU, not the CPU for this functionality. And then in the top right, you can see the kernel type is custom. The input pins and output pins are one here. There's our in and our out. We have options for thread count. We have uh, some advanced options, but really we want to be able to customize the code here. So if we go ahead and open the source editor by clicking this button right here, we get access to it. Now, if I open all of this up, you can see we have information in the declarations, which are read only. This is for you kind of to understand how this is set up. And I'll explain a few things here and there for the declarations in a moment. But down below is where you can put your actual code. Now we're gonna be using the shader source section here, which is effectively the main part of the graph where we can specify everything. Now, as I don't know how to code, I just know a little bit of HLSL here to be able to help us out. We can go to something like ChatGPT to start making the main part of the code and all the math functionality that we need to get us the result we want. So what I'm gonna do is actually this, all of these declarations, I'm gonna select them all and copy them. And then I'm gonna come here to ChatGPT. Now I have the completely free version of ChatGPT. So all of you should be able to recreate this for yourself. Now it might give you slightly different code, of course, but using what I show you and explain of this HLSL code, hopefully you'll be able to kind of guide it in the same correct direction as I do here. So all I'm saying here is I'm using PCG in Unreal Engine 5. It has a new HLSL node in 5.5 and I would like to have the points I pipe into it repositioned into a spiral going upwards. Here are the declarations from the HLSL node. I was gonna just press enter. I was gonna take a moment to think about it and generate you some code, but once you're done, we have the spiral calculation HLSL code. We can go ahead and copy this code and we can plug this into the shader source. Now, right now we have nothing plugged into it and we do need something plugged into it. So to plug points into it, I'm actually going to use the point generator from the HLSL that we just took a look at. And 256 points is fine. We're just gonna plug them all into this custom HLSL. And then I drag out of it and just search for debug. So that way we can debug the points right away. Now, if we take a look at it, uh, it's not quite going 
up is it? It seems like there's a quite a bit of points, and it's sort of in a spiral, but it's not really. So coming here, we can tell JetGPT the points seem to be going around, but they don't move up in height like a spiral. I'll go ahead and take a moment to update the code. Now you want to wait for it to finish, of course. And once it does, you can go ahead and copy code and the shader source. I'll just go ahead and select it all and paste it in. Now, something to keep in mind is when I paste something in or when I change anything, there is no undo. So if I, for example, just press enter a few times and just type gibberish here and I press control Z, it will undo it. But if I deselect it and click back into it and then try to undo, I cannot undo. It only undoes while I'm still in it and modifying things. As soon as I click away, it's locked in. So if you have something that is working, I'd recommend opening a notepad, copying the code there, making sure that you're like, cool, you have a backup of it, and then proceeding to making any changes. So great, we got a few options here. And now we can see, oh, look at that. We now have the points actually like going up in a spiral. Okay, now what do we have here? Well, it is defining the spine parameters. The radius is 100. Let's set the radius here to 500. We can just modify it here. Total height being 1,000 is fine. Number of turns. And we have the number of points to process here. It is automatically ca calculating how many degrees it wants to turn the points. That's great. But we've now just set the spiral radius to 500. And with our quick recalculations, you can see it is now of a larger radius here. Now, one thing I would like to do is control the spacing between the points. Because right now, we can control the height of it. I mean, for example, we can say the total height being 2,000 units. And you can see the it has increase the height. And this may be what we want. We maybe we want to control it based on height. I'm going to say instead of the spacing of the points being determined by the height of the spiral, I would like to control the distance between each point. Once done adjusting, again, copy code, come here, select it, paste it in. And we don't really have something that makes that much sense anymore. If I change the spiral radius to something like 500, okay, that seems like it's working. We can change the point space instead of 20 to something like 200. And now it's going quite considerably higher. And this spacing here is quite large. So let's change it to something like 100. It's not changing the spacing between them. So it's not quite working the way we want. Now, from my experience, if you get a bad result, it is actually better to just edit the previous text instead of going ahead and trying to fix the new one that it created. Because the previous one was good. So it's just, it did something that you didn't want to in the new thing that you specified. I'm going to modify this last thing. Instead of spacing out the points being determined by the height of the spiral, I'd like to control the distance between each point. The number of rotations should automatically be adjusted by the distance, radius, etc., of the spiral. We're going to tell it to do that instead. I'll change the spiral radius here to 500. We'll change the point spacing to 100. I will change the total height here to 2000. If I change the point spacing to 200, we get more spacing. So now we can control the amount of rotations with the height. So if I change it to like 10,000 with a point spacing of 200 and a spiral radius of 500, we can see it goes considerably higher and we have the spacing here. Now, the spacing is a bit much, but that's okay. With the notes still selected, we can go ahead and change it to something like 150 and they're a little bit closer. Now, one thing to note here is, let's say we're happy with this method of control over this. It's taking our 256 points. It is positioning them upwards 10,000 units because that's how tall we told it to be. And the distance between the points is automatically being calculated here. So great. But we want to also rotate the points along this way. So let's go back here now that we have a decent result that we are happy with. I would like the points to rotate to face towards the next point. So each one faces from the last one and to the next. This time around, we did not get any errors, but we can see it is very close by. So again, I'll change the spiral radius to 500, change the point spacing to 150, and change the total height to be 10,000. Click away. And we can see, well, it is kind of facing the right way. It's really hard to tell. So instead of this debug, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. I'm gonna get a static mesh spawner. Instead of here, we're just going to add a mesh entry. And in here, I'm going to specify a cone. It's a nice, simple cone. Now, if I take a look here, well, mm, the cone is not facing the right way. It seems like it's consistent, but if only if it was facing this way. Well, let's take a look at this cone. Now here we have compute rotation quaternion to face the forward direction. The define up direction is Z, but 
I don't want to define the up direction. I would like to do define the forward direction instead, because that would make it a lot easier for me to figure out what I need to put in here. So over here in ChatGPT, we're going to specify, instead of defining the up direction, I would like to define the forward direction instead. In this new version, we have the forward base direction. We've specified Y to be the default, and I know that it faces up, so I'll change this to be 1.0 for the Z direction. The example is forward along the Y axis. We want forward along the Z axis. But if we take a look, it isn't still not quite following the correct way. And this is because it is not considering the actual radius of the spiral. Now looking at the code it is giving me, I can see that it is using element index times angle point. But if I look up here into our declarations, you can see here's our element index and our data index. What that actually means is this. This is the element index and this is the data index. So it's actually not getting the correct information at all. So make sure that it does the correct thing. I'm going to say the element index and data index should say zero because that is what we're going to get it from. We're getting it from the main first points information and really that should have all the attributes we need. Last thing we need to kind of fix is the rotation of the points not quite lining up to each other as it goes up the spiral. So we'll try to get ChatGPT to fix this. And after some fiddling with ChatGPT, we managed to get this result here where all of these cones are now facing upwards towards the next as it goes completely up into the sky. So this is all great. We're kind of got the result that we want with the control we want, but now how do we control it? Because if I take this point and I just move it to the right, it goes back to the start. And I kind of want to be able to move it and rotate it, etc., along this. But instead, this is all globally controlled. And no matter how I offset it, it returns back to the original position. Now, I can absolutely force ChatGPT to change the code again. But sometimes there's just simple solutions just within PCG that gets you the result without needing to go about it with the extra code writing, etc. So here in the code, all we're going to do is grab ourselves a get actor data. We're going to change it to get single point. And all I'm going to do is take this custom HLSL and I'm going to do a copy points node. And the target is going to be the get actor data. And that is going to be then piped into a static mesh spawner. And you'll see that it has now basically copied all those points to our original point, which means I can now go ahead and rotate it and adjust it as I'd want. In fact, I can even scale it down or scale it up. It is now completely controlled from this point. So that's great. But now we want to add and expose all of those settings that we did. We want to control the height. We want to control the spacing, etc., directly from the blueprint so we don't have to go into the code at all. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we want to do is figure out what do we want to actually expose? Well, we want to expose the spiral radius, the point spacing, the total height. And let's say I also want to modify this up vector, which is actually our forward vector. It just got kind of confused. So let's say we also want to modify this. So all we need to do is go to our blueprint and add ourselves some variables. I'll add a spiral radius of a type float. It is going to be exposed. Our point spacing, our total height, and the forward vector, which is going to be a type of vector and is also going to be exposed. I'll go ahead and compile all this. And we're going to change the defaults here. Spiral radius is going to be 500. Point spacing will be 100. Total height, 5,000. And the forward vector, I'll make it Z1. So now that we have all those, we need to add those our inputs in our custom HLSL. So we'll go to input pins and I'll go ahead and add four input pins. And for convenience, I'm going to name them the same as I did in the variables for the blueprint. So I'll grab spiral radius. That'll be our first one. The main thing I'm going to need to do is change the allowed types here to attribute set. The second one is point spacing attribute set. Third one is a total height attribute set. And the last one is a forward vector attribute set. So now we need to plug these in. So I'm going to right click and search for get actor property. And here in the get actor property, we need to specify the property name, which is the name of the variable. So I can paste it in. But we also need the output attribute name. So I'm going to paste the same name in here. And this is going to be our forward vector. So I'll just plug that in here. And I'll duplicate it three times and do the same thing for the other ones. Once I have everything plugged in, you can see the node becomes enabled again and we're good to go. Now, nothing has actually changed. While I do have it exposed here in the detail panel, I can change it to a thousand, but nothing's going to actually adjust here because it is not using these inputs. So now how do we tell this custom HLSL to use the information from here and not what it had before? Well, that's where in the declarations we can get this right here. This is the line that we can use to get the information 
from our points. So what I'm gonna do is grab this, I'm gonna copy it. And I'm gonna change the spiral radius. Instead of being hard code here to 500, I'm going to just select all of this and paste it right in here. And now let's customize this. This type I can actually remove. I'm going to remove this. Pin here is actually the name of the pin. So in our case, it is spiral radius. So I'll name it spiral radius. Leave it as underscore get. The type is a float, so we'll change it to float here. Get float. Now this UINT data index and element index, as I mentioned, is the data index and the index of the points. So I'm just going to change both of these to just say zero. And then the attribute name, again, is the name of the attribute that we've output from here, which we're called the same thing, spiral radius. Now, if you piped everything in, just like I did, and you see an error here, use of undeclared identifier spiral radius underscore get float. That is because I have made this float lowercase instead of uppercase. It is case sensitive. But here's the thing. If I make it uppercase and then I click away, it goes back to lowercase. For whatever reason, it thinks, oh, well, you're replacing it with the same thing. So I'm just going to go back to what we had before because nothing's different. So to fix this, I'm going to just put whatever I want in here, just like a old gibberish, click away. And now I can click back in here and properly change it to uppercase float, spiral radius, underscore get float, zero, zero, spiral radius, click away. And now it is happy. And if we take a look, we have our spiral. And if I change our spiral radius now to 500, you can see it is now automatically adjusting everything. So we'll set it back to 500 and we're good. So now we can do the same thing for point spacing, total height and forward vector. I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy this part now, place it instead of the 150. But we want to make sure that we have point spacing here and point spacing in here. The total height, we're going to paste in here as well and change this again to the same thing, total height and total height. Now this is all good, but for the last one, is our forward vector is slightly different, not very different. But over here for the up axis, we can go ahead and paste this in here. But instead of get float, we want to get a float three here. And then again, instead of spiral radius, we're changing it to forward vector and spiral radius here becomes forward vector. And we'll remove the extra semicolon that I pasted in. So now if I click away, there's no errors. And if I want to, I can go in here, change the radius to 750, change the point spacing to something like 200 or 50, make it even closer. We can control all of that. We control the heights. So we can make it shorter or taller. And if I want to, I can even reverse the direction by going negative one in the forward axis. And you can see it is now all just going downwards instead. And of course, this is relative to the actual direction. So I can just do this and have it just go out like so. And again, make it 10,000 and it goes significantly further, 200 points. You get quite interesting result really quickly. Now, of course, you're, if you're able to natively write HLSL code yourself, this is no problem. This becomes a so much simpler. But I just want to show you guys that even if you don't know how to write any code at all, which is a few little things, knowing how to replace the variables and knowing kind of where to look just a little bit, it allows you to use this node even with no programming experience, thanks to things like ChatGPT. Now, as always, the project for this will be available on my Patreon, where you can join these wonderful people here in supporting what I do. It really means a lot. And if you'd like to join the community, the link to the Discord will be down below as always. Thank you again to the patrons. And if you're looking for other cool 5.5 features, check out this one right here, where I go over one of my absolute favorites.